Welcome to how to make a coal-fired steam engine boiler plant. This is part 25. The initial steam test showing most of the usual problems encountered by beginners. And on screen at the moment is an alternative idea for a fire grate for this boiler. The parts just need fastening together. To open this episode though, I would like to show you something very interesting. It's the Book of Steam. This was made by Black Orchard Books and Leatherwork and the web address is on screen at the moment. This book is going to feature in a spin-off video series that I'm about to make. I'm not going to say much about it at the moment, but I think you will find it very interesting. And the book of steam is not what it seems. For instance, I can keep my set of barco spanners inside it. So it's not really a book at all. But in fact, it will be because it will have lots and lots of pages inside it. And these pages will be absolutely cram-packed full of information about model steam engines. And the reason that I asked my friend Andrew at Black Orchard Books to make it this way is so that I can take the pages out of the book and put them somewhere else. And of course, the book will never get full. So I could have called it the Everlasting Book of Steam. The opening shot of this video shows an alternative fire grate, but that will need welding together. I think I'm going to go with, well, this one initially for this test, but I'll just make a slightly thicker one, maybe out of 3mm thick stainless steel. Right, and it's on with the test. This is the worst steam test you will ever see, because what I've tried to do with it is do it entirely from memory from the first steam test I ever did. So it's a beginner's guide to how not to do a steam test. I've connected a pump to the boiler, and it's now time to fill the boiler with water. I can either move the pump handle for what seems like an age, or I can put a bottle like this on the inlet to the pump and just squeeze the bottle and the boiler fills up. In this shot of the water gauge, you can clearly see the water going up the glass. And if you decide to fill your boiler this way, don't forget to open a valve at the top of the boiler to let the air out. I just thought I'd mention that. This coal is far too big for this boiler. But a beginner wouldn't know that, and that's why I'm going to use it, to show what happens. When I fire up my larger boiler, I just use some pieces of wood soaked in white spirit. I'm going to use the same method to fire this very small boiler. So off we go. I've filled the boiler's firebox with wood soaked in white spirit, and all I have to do is introduce a lit piece of wood into the... Oh, it's gone out. I'll try again. I'm introducing a lit piece of wood into the fire hole. And as I move my great big, much over scale hand out of the shot, as you can see, the fire goes out again. So, third time lucky, I'll try again. And this time, the fire lights. Oh joy, it's gone out. But looking on the bright side, we at least have some smoke. I will light it again. And this time, I'm going to quickly shut the fire hole door because maybe the air rushing in through the fire hole. Is putting the fire out. And by the way, I'd just like to mention, I am of course doing this like a beginner, as I said at the beginning of the video, so please don't write in to tell me that I'm doing it wrong. This is intentional. A quick health and safety warning. Do not ever, ever use petrol when doing this. This is white spirit. You can use white spirit or paraffin, but don't use petrol. I think maybe it's time to look at the fire and see whether it's lit. I'll just open the fire hole door. Oh look, we have a fire, which immediately leaps out of the fire hole and tries to burn me. If you look at model coal-fired boilers, most of them have the cladding burnt at the front, and it's because this sort of thing happens. So what's going on? Why won't it light? Many, many years ago, I actually bought a Rob Roy 3.5 inch gauge miniature steam locomotive. And with the engine on blocks on the bench, anticipating it running in no time at all, I was doing exactly the same as I'm doing now, and getting the same results. Lots of smoke, but no fire. And there's not a great deal of smoke coming out of the chimney at the moment, so what's going on here? As soon as I put any coal on the fire, it just went out. So I think it's time to try out my removable grate idea. And it is a great idea because it works. Here comes the grate, and all the ashes, and the coal, and as you can see there's far too much coal, fall into the ash pan. So why didn't it work? Why didn't it light and raise steam? The answer is insufficient draft. 
I need one of these. This is a blower, or really it's a sucker because it goes in the top of the chimney and evacuates the air. I need to make an extension pipe for it so it fits in the chimney. So instead, what I'm going to do is fit a compressor pipe to the spare clack valve. And that way I can introduce air pressure into the boiler and open the blower. And to illustrate the effectiveness of the blower, this is without the blower. And here I opened the blower valve and a jet of air went up the chimney and look what happens. A bright fire and everything is looking much better. The events in this video are obviously condensed, it's not in real time. I sat for about two hours messing about with this to try and get the best effect for the video. And with so many small fires and such a lot of white spirit being used, eventually the water did start to boil. But anyway, back to how the beginner would have done it. So flush with excitement at having a fire in the firebox, a beginner would probably do this. Shove loads and loads of wood into the fire hole door. The general idea being to put as much wood in there so that you'll get a really big fire, but the opposite happens. Even though it's initially encouraging with a bright fire, it's only the white spirit burning away. When it comes down to burning the wood, there's not really much room in there for any air. So even with the blower on, the wood's going to burn, but I'm not going to get the incandescent bed that I require to light the coal. In this clip you can clearly see what's happening. I'm constantly introducing pieces of wood into the fire hole. And once again, I'm of course simulating a beginner doing this. Full of excitement. I mean, I still get quite excited doing things like this, but not this. I mean, putting lots and lots of bits of wood, increasingly larger bits of wood into the fire hole. But starting a fire in a model boiler is still a good experience. Most beginners, and that includes myself when I was a beginner, cannot leave the fire alone. So here I am, poking about inside the fire with the firing iron. And now I can even pack some more wood in there. A few words about the blower. There's a distinct technique in using a blower. I don't mean the blower that sits on top of the chimney that you remove once you've raised steam. What I'm referring to is the small valve on top of the boiler that introduces a jet of steam up the chimney to draw the fire. But I'm using compressed air that's piped in through the clack round the side of the boiler. By feeding in a constant supply of bits of wood soaked in white spirit, Yes, there is heat being generated. I'll just give it another poke. But it's not a proper fire. And with the blower valve open and a jet of compressed air rushing up the chimney, this is causing air from the outside world to rush in through the fire hole, not from the bottom of the boiler through the fire. So the fire is only really burning at the top. What I should be doing now is keeping the fire hole door shut at all times and that way the air would enter through the holes in the bottom of the fire grate. The other problem of course is all this cold air rushing in through the fire hole goes straight up through the tubes and cools the boiler down. By now you should have got the message that this is not the way to do it, but just in case you haven't, I'll put some more wood in the fire hole. The water inside the boiler is now boiling slightly. If you look at the water gauge you'll see the water level moving up and down. I know, let's put some coal on. In this part of the comedy of errors, I've opened the blower valve some more, and now there's a massive stream of air, and a little bit of steam perhaps going up the chimney, which is drawing the fire. The fire hole door's shut, and if you look in the bottom of the ash pan, you may see a very faint red glow. I've turned off the compressed air to the boiler, so what you're seeing is real steam pressure inside the boiler, but a very tiny amount. And a quick look at the fire shows that, yes, a piece of coal is actually alight, I know, I'll just stick loads more on. Yeah, more coal needed, more coal. I'll just check the water level. This is the problem, of course. When the blower is using steam, the water level starts to drop. And once the water level gets really low, you have to put cold water in. And this drops the pressure, which means the blower becomes ineffective and the fire starts to go out. It's a cycle of events that is very common for both beginners and experienced people when firing model steam boilers, particularly the boilers found in model steam locomotives. Unlike the full-sized article, a boiler like this does not have any natural draft, and a horizontal boiler is even worse. I have a larger boiler plant that I use frequently, and that's much easier to handle. 
It does have some natural draft because of its physical size, and I don't need an electric blower to light up the boiler. Oh dear, the fire seems to have gone out in this one. So I think it's time to drop what's left of this fire and have a look at it. For me, making this video has been quite an interesting experience. It's been like a trip down memory lane, and I'm pleased to say that my pull-out grate is a success. The fire immediately drops, or not the fire, I use the term loosely, the mess just drops into the ash pan. And by using the shovel, I can clear the mess from the ash pan, ready to give the boiler a clean. This steam test for beginners took place in the outer part of my workshop, which is right next to a wide open garage door. And I wouldn't normally do this, but in the dirty part of the workshop where all the grinders are, it's not a big problem. I'm using the airline to blow all the residue away around the ash pan. And by the way, I am wearing some safety glasses. It's never a good idea to use an airline in this manner unless you have suitable eye protection. Once I've blown all the debris out of the ash pan, I then took the boiler through into the inner part of the workshop to have a close look at it. All I really needed to achieve with the steam test was to make the boiler expand by boiling the water up to 100 degrees or maybe just above. I wanted to see how much the cladding had moved. And here's the result. Gaps have appeared here, and more gaps have also appeared in this area. I really have seen a lot worse than this. I'm quite pleased with how few gaps have appeared. There's nothing here to speak of, but look at this one. And this is what usually happens. As the mahogany dries out, it shrinks, and the boiler, of course, with the heat is expanding, so gaps appear. I'll just give the base a bit of a wipe. I will, of course, be dismantling the boiler because I need to fix the cladding and there's one or two other things to do. During this steam test, of course, I could have raised the pressure considerably more than I did, but of course, this boiler does not yet have a pressure gauge fitted, and running a copper steam boiler of this type, up to full working pressure without a pressure gauge, is not something I would personally want to do. I'll finish this episode with a view of my excellent book of steam made by my friend Andrew at Black Orchard Books, and if you would like him to make you one, his website address is currently on screen. That's it for now, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.